Hello and welcome to Beer Tier, the German engineer. Explains, oxygen not included. Today, we are back with the final episode of our Explain Every Vent, Geyser and Volcano series. And the last one that we have left is the Niobium Volcano. This episode here will be only the Niobium Volcano and we're gonna go over it in absolute detail because I have not really found a good tutorial for it on YouTube. So I figured we're gonna do a little bit of a deep dive. So let's just jump right into that and see how that works out for us. And here we are. So let's get started. Let's turn our overlay on and let's pause the game roughly right here. So what are we doing here and why is our Niobium Volcano dormant and there is no Niobium here? Well, because we are going over it, how to build it and how to start it up. That is going to be highly important. That needs to work. Otherwise, everything will go to hell quite literally. It is extremely hot. We can take a look at the volcano itself. First, on the right, we can see Niobium 264.8 kilograms per second at 3227 degrees Celsius. That is a lot of heat. The eruption period for this particular volcano is 67 seconds out of 9,537 seconds. That doesn't seem like a lot, but if you do the mass, it comes out to be about 17.7 tons. So that is quite a lot and you will not need anywhere near this much niobium. And why that is, I will show you very soon here. We can see the active period is 85.4 cycles out of every 131 pretty standard and in our flow information we can see that we would need a dormancy buff for 33.6 tons of that stuff the thing is though it literally doesn't matter this is why i built this here this here should prevent anything like that from happening it should just run forever and if the niobium runs out down here it doesn't matter all it will cost you is a little bit of power so first of all let's take a look into our database and see what niobium actually is and what it does so First of all, what are we actually doing with niobium? Either we build buildings directly with it or we make thermium out of it in the molecular forge. The nice thing is to make 100 kilograms of thermium, you only need 5 kilograms of niobium and 95 kilograms of tungsten. How to tame a tungsten volcano we have already covered in a prior episode and it is a hell of a lot easier than this here. So it's pretty simple and straightforward to get tungsten. But then the other thing is when we go down here, produced by, we can take a hundred kilograms of thermium, put it into the metal refinery and get a hundred kilograms of niobium back out. And that is exactly why I said we definitely do not need that much niobium. Absolutely, we do not. And even better than that, if you're running out of sand, you can take a hundred kilograms of thermium, put it into the rock rusher and get 50 kilograms of niobium out and 50 kilograms of sand. So you are literally putting five kilograms in, a little bit of tungsten, get 100 kilograms out of it, and then you get 50 kilograms of niobium back out. Already that is a tenfold increase, and then you have even some sand left over on the side. If that is not something, I don't know what is. But this is why I said you will never need that much niobium, but this here is a 100% efficiency. You will not lose a single drop of niobium with this setup right here. So let's get into that. Let's go through all of our F buttons. F2, we can see the power right here. Of course, up here on top, we have our three steam turbines that just come into a large power transformer and then go out into our power grid. And our power grid is simulated, of course, by our dev tool right here on the right. Then from the large transformer, we come down, we power everything up that is here to be powered up. Altogether, a potential load of 1810 watts, which is really not that bad. The large transformer is of course on the inside right here so we cool it down with the rest might as well because why wouldn't we it doesn't cost anything other than a couple tiles of insulated tiles but that is perfectly fine in my opinion that's why i prefer to do it this way then in our f6 overlay what is going on with the piping we can see that the piping up here is pretty straightforward as usual which is coming down here somewhere in the middle and dropping the water back in from our steam turbines then with our thermi aqua tuner we are coming around this time towards the left first of all we're going to cool down over here this freeze box and then we come up into a liquid reservoir cooling down the rest of our steam turbines up here and then back in of course hooked up to a liquid pipe sensor as always i made these insulated pipes here out of tungsten that is of course absolutely not necessary not here on the top None of these here need to be made out of anything else than what you usually would make them out of in a normal steam room. Nothing crazy is going on in here. But down here on the bottom right, here it gets a little bit more interesting. So let's take a very close look. We have here this setup with a liquid filter and a liquid pump here on the bottom. With our liquid pump, we are coming up into the filter and we are filtering out niobium. Let's take a look at that. 
we say niobium and the niobium goes to the left into right here and we just drop it down here on the floor everything else and everything else is actually only petroleum will go up to the top and go through a liquid valve and come back down this liquid valve right here is set to 15 grams per second why that is we will get to that in a second what's important though is this liquid filter this conveyor loader and this liquid valve here have to be built out of niobium there is no other option to keep them completely from overheating down the road. If you build it out of steel, it will eventually break. That is important. How would you get niobium, you're asking? Well, you just have to extract a tiny little bit out of here. You don't need a hell of a lot. Maybe one drop down here and just extract it. Cool it down in any way, shape or form. Mine it with a dupe and use it to build this system right here. Once you have it, it's very simple to set up, but you need to have a little bit of niobium. And you also need the niobium to make this liquid pump down here out of thermium. Also, that is very important. You need thermium for this pump right here. Everything else will melt to hell and back. Next, we're going to go over our conveyors, and it's a, once again very simple and straightforward. We have over here our conveyor loader, and we're just snaking it through the entirety of our steam basin right here. And then right here, we have, of course, a conveyor rail thermal sensor that decides if you're going to the left or to the right. Here we have a conveyor bridge and that conveyor bridge is needed. If you don't put it in here, it will actually just sit there forever. This here is just so it knows in what direction to go because it is for some reason confused. I am honestly not entirely sure how because we do have this output right here, but apparently it does not know how that works. <laughs> but that is okay. A conveyor bridge does definitely solve that issue. If it is cold enough, you're going to the left through our metal tiles on the left here, which are made out of aluminum. And then we are just dropping it anywhere, just wherever you want to have it. And then in automation, let's see what we did here. Here, our liquid pipe thermal sensor is set to negative five degrees because we are running polluted water through here. So negative five minus 14 makes a total of negative 19 degrees Celsius, which is perfect. So we are just cooling this whole thing down as low as we can. And then this conveyor rail thermal sensor here is set to below 250 degrees. Also, that is okay because we are cooling it down the rest of the way down here. There is also no second loop. It's fine. There is more than enough capacity in here to get rid of all of this stuff. Let's get back over here to the right and let's actually run it. You can see those 15 grams of petroleum coming through here. That is right. And why is that? Because what I built here is a so-called contactless liquid pump. So how does it work and what does it do? If I click on the liquid pump, and I have a mod that I use to show me the actual range. We can see it actually reaches down here. But at the same time, it is not inside of a liquid because it needs to be in a liquid in any of these tiles right here. And it is not if I just build it above the niobium. So we are just giving it a tiny little bit of liquid, 15 grams to be precise, right here to trigger the pump. And it will suck up those 15 grams and 10 kilograms of whatever we have in this tile right here. And that is exactly what we want. We want to get 10 kilograms of niobium out of here. But at the same time, our liquid pump pump should not be inside this liquid. And why is that? Let's take a look at our liquid pump and the properties. It has a melting point of 2676.9 degrees Celsius. And if we remember, our niobium comes out of our volcano at 3227. We touch the niobium with our liquid pump, it will melt in a heartbeat so fast you can literally not even see it happening. So we need to avoid that at all costs. Highly important is also that this here is built with a vacuum. This vacuum here is absolutely necessary. If there's any sort of gas in here, you will have problems because it will superheat and it will melt everything that's in here. So we need to be careful to have a vacuum in here. Our insulated tiles down here on the bottom, I made them out of ceramic. I could have made it out of insulation, but ceramic works. Ceramic has a thermal conductivity of 0.006, which is extremely low. There's only one tile in the game and that is insulation. So we can actually build one just so you can see what that looks like. Over here, we have insulation. I'm going to build it right there and it has zero. It takes no heat whatsoever. Is that really necessary? The answer is absolutely no. The melting point of our ceramic insulated tile is at 1849.9 degrees. Then as soon as we put some niobium in here, you will see that this here barely increases. I mean, barely. There's absolutely nothing that's happening here. For my calculations, it's like something insane, like 15,000 cycles to actually get to the melting point. And I have actually not seen anybody go that high with their cycle. So I'm not that worried about it. Let me put it this way. So let's actually start this system here up now and see what happens. And if I use my brush tool, I'm going to put niobium in here, liquid, of course, 1,500 kilograms per tile with a temperature of 3,227. This is the same temperature it would co come out of our volcano. So let's fill this here up and let's see what happens. If you're now going out to our F6 overlay, we can see that niobium is coming up here. It's getting put to the left, put into our steam chamber, 
Then our auto sweeper picks it up, puts it into the conveyor loader, and the conveyor loader sends it around. And it will heat up our water down here quite drastically, relatively quickly. We should have steam here any second now. We are already at 74 degrees and we can see it rising. So we're just going to wait here for a second until this here actually becomes steam. And so let me turn up the speed one notch and we will see what that then looks like. And now we have all steam. I actually waited a tiny little bit too long to start recording again. Up here, we can see that our steam turbines are already up to almost full capacity and the temperature in here is still rising. It is just a question of time until our steam in here reaches 200 plus degrees. It comes in here with almost 2000 degrees Celsius, even though the amount or actually the weight of it is relatively low, it is still a lot of thermal mass that we are sending through here. Also, our thermal aqua tuner over here is going to help with that process because we need to keep our box over here nice and cool down here i already have 14.5 tons so you can see i have tested this system here quite a little bit uh, also deleted it several times and replaced it you know just the standard trial and error stuff but i can guarantee you this system here works and we're just gonna let it run until we run out of niobium and we will see what that then looks like now we have one cycle down the road and all of our steam turbines producing their full 850 watts we are at over 200 degrees celsius in here with our steam and it's still going to go up a tiny little bit but you always have to keep in mind if this system here is actually running it will turn itself on and off and therefore it will regulate its own temperature without a problem here i just put in a completely random amount so it is what it is we're just gonna let it run and we're gonna see what happens we are still having a bunch of stuff in here that we need to get rid of so i'm just gonna turn up the speed to full force and i will let it run for your enjoyment And here we have it. The rest of our niobium is currently leaving the system. Coming out of here, let's take a quick look. What's the temperature of it? 7.2 degrees, 8.7 degrees. Yeah, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And we're just going to drop it down here. And we are now at 21.2 tons. And the system is now basically shut down. We have emptied it out completely. And the whole system here will just cool itself all the way down until it will come to a complete halt. We are basically simulating a dormancy of our volcano which it actually is dormant and here we have it our entire system is properly cooled down again to below 125 degrees so our steam turbines are off everything's working as it should the entire system here on the right is still running consuming a tiny little bit of power between 130 and 250 watts i don't really care about it because if you build a system like that you are at the very end game which means you should certainly not have any more power issues and i just wouldn't worry about it at all there is no automatism that i can think of to turn this one here off the only way to do it would be manually by coming out of here with an automation wire and putting a signal switch right here but again i really don't care about those 250 watts it literally shouldn't matter at this point in time if you're that far in the game but you certainly can do that you just need to make sure that you have less than let's say five kilograms of total petroleum in your liquid pipes that is the important part otherwise you will clog your system and you certainly don't want that to happen but then you also need to make sure that you turn it back on and go back and forth i just don't want to deal with that kind of stuff so i'm not gonna do it but yes, this here is an Iobium timer. The only other thing that is important is that you actually calculate how much fits in here. This here are 14 tiles and you can hold 3,800 kilograms per tile before it stacks up. That you want to avoid at all cost. I take 3,500 kilograms just to be on the safe side. And that means for this entire length here, we can store about 49,000 kilograms, which is more than enough for a normal eruption cycle. This one here erupts roughly every 14 cycles. That's just what that looks like. Not a big deal. It is what it is. Also, since we're in a vacuum, we are barely losing any heat. It will be fine for a long, long time. If you take a look at niobium, it is not going to freeze up until it reaches 2,476 degrees. And that is certainly not going to happen anytime soon. Our insulated tiles, we can take a look here. Hey, the first tiles made it up to 21 degrees. Isn't that something? <laughs> yeah, again, we need to make it at above 1,800 degrees for anything to go wrong with ceramic. But yes, this is my build. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. And if you did, please subscribe to the channel, leave a like on the video and comment down below. Also, if you have any questions about this build or any other build, join the Discord server. But with that, I say thank you and peace.